It was not ever really said in such clear language that humans have unequivocally produced the warming that we are currently experiencing and are locked into going forward. It said that without any sort of confusion, that this is really where we are, it's human caused. And the beauty of it being human caused, if we can find any beauty in this report, is that it means humans can also change the course that we're on. talking about is the carbon emissions and methane emissions that have been produced from human human um, advancement ultimately across sectors transportation food and agriculture aviation it's created this 10 foot blanket that is warming our planet and ultimately we need to reverse that by by overhauling these different sectors that we've gotten really accustomed to operating in a certain way we need to overhaul it so that it is all of this is run on clean energy. It's really important to remember that even though it seems like a really minor increase in temperature, there are some serious widespread implications of even a point 0.01% increase in average global temperature. Think about how your body feels when you have a temperature just going up a couple degrees. You really feel like your body's on fire. Well, that's really what's happening. We can anticipate increased and intense and simultaneous impacts that take the form of hurricanes and sea level rise and increased droughts, heavy precipitation events. And it's one thing to experience these um, here and there where we can actually deploy relief and recovery teams. But if these are happening simultaneously, we're talking about more wildfires all year round, like what we're experiencing in California, the Dixie Fire. And we're talking about simultaneously hurricane season kicking off and storm surges and heavy precipitation resulting in what we saw with Harvey, Hurricane Harvey in Texas. So we really have to recognize that at 1.5 degrees, everything we are currently experiencing is amplified. And at two, we're talking about 14 times more likely um, heat waves. We're talking about 70% more heavy precipitation events. So we really need to max out at 1.5 degrees. Can't go higher than that. And it's everybody's responsibility to play a role in ensuring that that happens. If we can, for example, manage retreat away from vulnerable coastlines, because this report has stated very clearly that sea levels are rising and we know which coastal cities are going to be most impacted, which ones will be submerged when there are hurricanes um, alongside sea level rise, alongside heavy precipitation, we can get ahead of that. We can really proactively prepare for that now. And then we can keep this warming stable so that we max out and that we adapt to this new planet and ultimately uh, see actually what could be a brighter future. So the United States needs to take the lead on transitioning to fully renewable by 2050. And there's steps to take leading up to that. And so that means fully clean electricity by 2035. It's ambitious, but it's part of Biden's Build Back Better climate agenda. And it can absolutely be done if we, again, are able to pass through Congress here in the United States, a reconciliation bill that really supports climate, urgent climate action and clean energy and incentivizing new industries to truly utilize clean energy and to make polluters pay. We do not accept pollution as a national um, rallying cry. We need to say polluters must pay and those who are following up on clean energy should continue to do so and be supported. And once we are actually showcasing transitioning across sectors that have historically used fossil fuels, like agriculture, like transportation, like elect our electric grid, 
Now we can showcase by example what the rest of the world can do. So we can see China do the same, so we can ask India to do the same. These countries will need to also step up. It is a temperature check, no pun intended, on where countries are in terms of how they are planning to reduce their emissions contributions. And so it's really critical that this report came out when it did, because it is such an alarm bell. It is such a wake up call. It's code red. It's all the different words you've been hearing describing why this report is saying in plain English very clearly that humans have unequivocally caused climate change, but can also be the reason that it turns around. Because we caused it, we can solve it. It is a signal to all heads of countries that there is never been a more urgent time to act and that these country leads will be remembered for what they did in this moment. From this report, the reality and the consensus of the science to the actions that politicians worldwide now need to take based on this evidence. And that's what we all eyes will be on coming up to COP26 in Glasgow.